Hi, this is Chris, and I'm going to show you how to install Teradex Live to Air Solo app on your iPhone today. Um, this way, you can send live video feeds directly from your phone up into Teradex core um, streaming platform. That core platform can then be used by us to uh, live splice you into an existing production, or it can be used to send your uh, live feeds directly into other platforms such as Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, private CDNs, uh, Wowza Cloud, etc. Um, this video is somewhat directed to the folks that are going to use our Zcast platform for an upcoming live event, um, but it applies to anybody who wants to use the Teradek Core or live stream via um, the live to air action application on your iPad as well. Uh, with Teradek Core and that live to air action app on your iPad, uh, these video feeds from all different locations on various folks' iPhones can be uh, all mixed together. So what's kind of cool about that is you could have performers uh, in multiple locations, different talent, and up to six different locations, and bring them all together into one live production uh, at the same time, make it look like they're all hanging out at the same place together if you'd like. Uh, and that's kind of what we're hoping to do at some point with uh, our production in a few weeks. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I'm actually going to show you how to do this on an, I, well, on an iPad itself, just because the screen's a little bit bigger. But this app actually uh, will install, the Live to Air Solo app will install on pretty much anything newer than an iPhone 5. Uh, my personal recommendation, though, is probably an iPhone 6 or an iPhone SE is probably, uh, the first gen SE is probably as far back as you want to go uh, to do this, just because of video quality and stuff and camera quality on the, uh, the newer phones. Um, so let's get uh, cranking here and um, as you can see I'm actually switching this live. I'm actually doing live recording of this uh, with the Teradek Live to Air Action app which is kind of neat because you can do things like add little bugs or add uh, lower thirds if you want kind of thing into, into it. But I've also got a, an array of iPhones here that I'm going to be using to do different camera angles as well as bringing um, the iPad screen here directly into the app by clicking this button. So now you should be able to see my iPad screen, and hopefully this will be a little shorter than the last time I did this. Um, first thing before you even get started, quite frankly, is you're going to want to go into settings. And from settings, there's a couple of things you're going to want to do ahead of time, right? So you're going to want to go into notifications and change your show previews to never. As long, Also, as well as go into the do not disturb section here, turn on do not disturb. Uh, silence it always, allow calls from absolutely no one, sorry, even your friends you don't want to talk to, and also turn off the repeated calls a uh, bit at the bottom here, okay? So this is going to basically, hopefully, lock down your iPad so that nobody can bother you while you're streaming and you can focus on streaming and your live stream doesn't get interrupted. I do uh, recommend, however, when your live feed is done to go undo all these things you do, otherwise you'll be wondering for days why nobody's calling you anymore. All right, so once those are all set, you're going to want to go into the App Store. Come on, App Store. All right, go into the App Store, and what you're going to want to search on is Teradex Solo. That's just the fastest way I've found to get in to find this app. And you'll see some advertising likely first, and then you'll see the uh, Live to Air Solo app as your download option here. So there's a couple other Live to Air apps. If you're doing this on an iPad, you'll get uh, Live to Air Action, probably the Live to Air Action bundle. Those are actually these full things that are running on my iPad over here doing this whole production. Uh, but for a remote camera, you just want to do the Live to Air Solo. The Live to Air Solo will send up to Core. There's also a Live to Air Remote app, which only works on your local network. So if everybody's in the same Wi-Fi, then you can use that to feed into Live to Air Action. But we're talking about today using Live to Air Solo so you can broadcast to Core and then have somebody bring that down centrally to mix you all in or to switch you into other live streams. So download Live to Air Solo, and this is going to hopefully go pretty quickly. If it gets started, there we go, it's starting to come in. A little slower than it was on my uh, newer device that I tried this out on earlier. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I wish I had a little background music for you while you wait. Sorry, you can probably skip about 10, 15 seconds ahead in the video and, and get past all this foolishness while I'm installing it. I, I purposely uninstalled it so that it would go in and, and appear clean to you when, I, when I'm actually bringing this in. Now, here's another trick. You don't actually want to open this app from the App Store. Um, I would go and do your double tap on your button, get rid of all your other apps that are running that you don't actually need for this, and then, where did it go, there it is, uh, and enter the Live to Air Solo app directly from here. Alright, so now it's going to come in, and we're going to have a couple little bits of funkiness going on when this happens, only because when it first gets started up, it's going to start asking questions, it's going to change what it looks like, 
you're actually going to lose some of the video here. And one of the things I definitely want to do is make sure that the audio from this thing is not coming in and bothering us. So everything's muted. Good idea. Okay, everything's muted. All right, so you are going to get, and let me zoom in so you can see a little more of what I'm doing before I get these set up. So uh, it's going to ask immediately to have access to your camera. You obviously have to tell it you can have your camera. It's going to want access to your microphone. That should be pretty obvious as well. Uh, location, you don't really need to do that, but why not? Just let it go. It's only going to be on while you're actually using the application. Uh, it's going to want access to your photos. Photos is so that you can uh, pull in other content. So if you want to mix in some other things, uh, the Live to Air Solo app is actually a mini version of the Live to Air Action app. So you can do things like multiple cameras, bring in some other things, et cetera, et cetera. As you can see in the demo, you see this Chris's iPad thing floating around down here. So we're going to say give access to the photos, send notifications. Now, for this bit, typically you could go in and pick uh, other CDN right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say not yet just so I can get this set up so that you can actually see the screen properly. Um, so I'm going to go in and make an option change here that you don't have to worry about right now. This is mostly for me to be able to show you what I'm doing on here. So let me switch back. So now you can actually see what I see here and I'm going to overlay myself. Actually, I'm going to overlay this one so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, so now you have this demo screen going on. The demo screen is pretty cool. Uh, tells you some directions. But what's interesting is that what's playing in the background is a source. It's a video loop source. Um, and there are two overlays present. One overlay is telling you how to do things, right? And the other overlay is this thing that says, you know, Chris's iPad. To access the sources and these overlays, you can swipe from the, the right to the left, and it brings up your overlays over here. And if you deselect them, they go away. The little Teradek logo goes away, the instructions go away. If you're going to be streaming for most live events, usually this is you're going to want to turn all these off. All right, now if you swipe back over, it blows it away. Uh, if you come from the left and go to the right, you can see your sources over here. Um, if you long press on a source, you can get some options to configure that source. And I'm going to delete this video. Now this just deletes it from the source. It doesn't delete it from your, from your iPad or your iPhone. And then we can add the new source in. I will do that later. Just I want to free up some resources on here so that I can just quickly get through some of these bits for you and show you how to install things. Okay, so for configuring this to go to Teradek Core, what you're going to want to do is, one, you already have to have a Teradek Core account, by the way. Um, and for those using our Zcast uh, event, I will send you credentials a little later on how to do that. Um, go into, click this little gear box up here to open up the settings options. All right, and from here, you'll see broadcasting destinations. So you're going to want to pick broadcasting destinations, manage your destinations, add a destination, and right up here at the top is core. Pick core. Now it's going to ask you for your email and password to your core account. Uh, hopefully, my stuff is still saved in here. Hello? Oh, yes. Here's where you're going to get to see my password. <laughs> Anyway, if you steal my iPad, now you know what my password is. All right, uh, and let's see, Core Cloud. It should auto-populate. It did not. I went through a lot of this for no good reason now. Why is this not working? Do that. Get Core Cloud. Ah, there we go. All right, so here we are. We're in this time. Click Done. Logging in, obtaining credentials, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so from this point, you're going to want to pick on demand sub Sputnik and for my group of folks pick US East please that's the closest to us uh, but for you you're gonna want to pick a location geographically as close to you as possible um, or geographically as close to where the person doing the switching is right so if you're uh, you know if you happen to be in Europe but your switching is in the United States uh, send it to the United States directly make life a little easier for those guys reduce the latency the other thing I would typically do is I would uh, Reduce the display name. So, um, let's see, iPad mini. Um, reduce the display name a little bit if you could. Uh, that is really kind of useful. Uh, it'll only it'll show up nice and short on the live to air screen uh, for the person doing the switching for you. 
All right, so we've got an on-demand Sputnik. The buffer length is basically just how much buffer we have between us and the internet. If you're on a shoddy internet connection, I recommend keeping it, you know, 4,000 milliseconds or a little higher. Um, the poorer the internet connection, the more of a buffer you're going to want, but it also introduces latency. Uh, so that means whatever you're doing right now is going to be four seconds behind what, at least four seconds behind what they're seeing. Um, so click done when we're done. And then we'll go back to settings because there's a couple of little settings you should set. So encoder settings. For our, our events, uh, I wouldn't use any of these manual pieces. Pick a normal profile here, right? So like we're going to do 720p for our event. Um, click done on that one after you pick your resolution. All of your device resolutions should match. It makes life a lot easier. Uh, actually, I probably shouldn't have clicked done, but let's go back into settings and change a couple other things here. Uh, let's see. Actually, that was it. So there are some other settings sometimes where you might have an option here to turn on um, uh, shake control, camera stabilization. You could do that here as well. Not present on my old iPad Mini 2, but might be on your phone. Um, the AirPlay output, that AirPlay output is what I changed before. Um, that's so I can stream this back into you guys and you guys can see what's going on here. I'm using a Teradek Cube to bring into live to air action, which is kind of cool because you can use a lot of different things to get content into live to air action. Uh, let's see, some permissions were all set. Extra features, extra features is things you could buy to add value to this application. So if you wanted to get feedback, if you were streaming directly to Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, you could get feedback in this app from people commenting uh, as you were streaming. A URL overlay lets you overlay a URL, so if you were doing like a scoreboard or something like that, you could overlay that. Um, and then to record output, if you want to record from your iOS device, uh, you'll need that option turned on. However, that being said, uh, if you're streaming to Core, you can do the recording on Core itself. As long as the feed makes it to Core, you can do the recording on Core. Um, and that's what we'll be doing for our event, so you guys don't have to worry about buying uh, that option. But if you want to keep a local copy and be guaranteed you have your recording on your uh, iPhone or iPad, you can uh, add that option in. We'll click done here. So now, once it's all done, we're going to want to add a source. The source is going to be the iPad's camera. So you click add new source, and here's where you can add a bunch of different things. You could add another Teradek device, like uh, you know Teradek cubes, if you've got them, or something else. Uh, video files, local video files, uh, core devices. If you want to bring something in from core, you could do that. But we're just going to add iOS camera, and here it is. So by default, there's your iOS camera, and now you can see what's going on here. If you long press on it. You can do things like change the delay, uh, do an auto balance on the white balance. Um, oh, here's your camera stabilization. I'm sorry, it was on the screen. So you can turn camera stabilization on if your device supports it. Uh, add any additional delay. You can change from the front to the back camera. So we can go to the front camera and you can see my nasty face. Or we can go back to the back camera and see my iPad. Uh, so we'll click done. Now, once this is all done, it's super, super easy. Uh, basically, all you have to do at this point is touch the go live button. And now what it's going to do is it's going to allocate you up to Sputnik, uh, up to Teradek Core. And then from the Core Cloud, uh, you'll be able to pull this feed down on your iPad, uh, running Teradek Live to Air. Or we could directly switch this in. So that's the other cool thing, too, is you don't need another device. You could take this and set up a channel on uh, your Teradek Core account to ship this straight in. So what I'm going to do now is we are going to shift you to look at my desktop PC. Hopefully this works. It's a little shoddy doing this. Um, apologies in advance for the poor resolution, but what you should see here is if you go to inbound streams, we see my iPad mini. And we even have a little preview of what my iPad mini is looking at. If you click on your iPad mini here, uh, it will come up. Wait for preview. You have some statistics about the feed that's coming in. You can see my very slow refresh on this, but don't worry about it. Now here's where you can link in the channels. So we link in a channel, and this one's going to be to our CDN server directly. Uh, I'm getting a, this error message is just letting me know that I've already allocated this for something else. I probably shouldn't, but I know it's not running. We click go live, and now I'm shipping this off to our internal Wowza servers. Uh, usually we use Wowza's cloud as our CDN for distributing, but we do own licenses for individual Wowza servers just to, you know, for small venue stuff. Um, and then if we go to our live webcast site and click refresh, 
voila, we have it. All right, so here it is, live on the web page. Um, you know, all done, ready to go. We can switch this in now. Like I said, we could bring this in to um, directly into core. I mean, directly into our live to air app as well. I could go to add a new stream here now. Sorry for this being a little ghetto. Actually, this is way, way, way behind. Yeah, this is not going to be easy for me to show you. But we could go in and we could add a core device. And we could actually add this in as a core device. Uh, my iPad, done on that. Device. And then I can uh, switch my iPad, my iPad directly done on that. Now. You should see and then I can switch my iPad directly in. Now you should really, see really kind of this cool. switched oh, in directly on my iPad, now, so which is really, really kind of cool. Sure, yes. There we go get rid of that echo that's the other thing you should kind of keep an eye on I know this is kind of ghetto the way I'm doing it here if you are using live data action you want to make sure everything that you don't want sound to come out of is muted um, bad things happen otherwise so anyway that was my down and dirty quick way on getting um, live data solo installed on your iPhone or your iPad and then being able to stream directly into core letting folks bring that down uh, to switch into live data action or you can stream it directly. Any questions, leave some comments, and I'll have some videos on how to do things like that uh, screen desktop sharing, which I know a lot of folks are really interested in, on how to get desktops streamed into uh, Teradek Live to Air Action. I've got a few different ways to do it. Um, the easiest way, but probably the most costly, is to use a Teradek Cube. Um, but we'll get into that in another video a little later. So check it out.